In part one, we made the panel base out of 3mm MDF and painted both sides as well as the edge. The track plan was suitably laminated and so is now ready to be fixed to the panel. In this video, we will connect the alpha switch, in this case an alpha switch D, to an alpha encoder unit or AEU. In turn, we connect this to a DCC system and then control a Cobalt IP digital point motor. Throughout the video, we also include some tips that might help you. For example, it's worth getting quality heavy duty laminate so the track plan doesn't look crinkly when it's glued onto the panel. Using a 7mm punch, we've already made holes where the bezels will be mounted. Lay the diagram centrally on the board and mark the position of the holes. Here we're using a jeweler's punch, but a pencil or a felt tip should work. Drill the holes using a 7mm bit. Now clean up both ends of the holes with a countersink. Use a couple of pens or pencils to align the diagram with the holes. Or, as we've done here, use two 7mm wooden dowels. Always use a good quality spray adhesive. It's false economy to save small change now. We actually prefer 3M. To ensure the best possible alignment of the diagram, the pens or dowels go at opposite ends and once the adhesive is tacky, place it on the board and smooth it down. The Alpha Switch D comes with its control board, six pairs of LED switches, bezels and harnesses with a choice of red, green or blue LEDs. Additional switches are available separately. We'll now need a small crosshead screwdriver for the switch's fixing screws. It's a bit of a fiddly job, so one that is magnetic will pay dividends. Worth mentioning here is that DCC Concepts also supply high quality tools for these very jobs. The DCT SND12 has screwdrivers and nut drivers for nearly every task in the hobby, designed by modelers for modelers. The bezels should just clip into the holes. If the holes have been made slightly too big, a drop of PVA glue should hold them. Turn the panel over and start offering up the switches to the bezels. You can see here why leaving enough space is important. It doesn't matter about the orientation of the switches and they can be rotated round to fit. The white strip on the switch is there to protect some adhesive. Peel this off and stick the switch in position. This is another good reason for painting both sides of the panel as it won't stick that well to bare wood. The other reason is that the paint protects the wood from getting damp and warping. Make sure any switches that are close together can all fit before using the screws. These self tap into the board and secure the switch. Another tip here, if you haven't got a magnetic screwdriver, a drop of PVA again will do the job. We now fit the connection harnesses to each of the switches. Note that these must fit the right way up. These harnesses now go to the main board. The demo unit we are building here hasn't got numbers, as it will make the display a bit too fussy, but for operational boards it's best to number each point on the diagram like this. Now connect each switch's pair of wires to the corresponding pairs on the board in the same order as the points, for example 1 to 6. Here we have a crossover. The point motors themselves are connected as a pair on the layout and the idea is to allow either of the two main line buttons to set the points to straight and the single button in the middle to set both points to crossover. To do this 
we join the two main line switches wires together using our DCC Concepts DCD SY3 Y connector. And the wire from this goes into one of the sockets. The switch wire from the middle of the crossover goes to the second socket. Now the switches are wired to connect each pair of switches to corresponding inputs on the alpha encoder unit, or AEU, that will convert the switch action into a digital command signal. The AEU sends these commands to the DCC system via a DCC concept six wire curly cord. Always use the DCC Concepts cord here. The other curly cords look similar, but they only have four wires and so won't work. The DCC system can be any of the major makes. Alternatively, you can use an alpha sniffer to create a two-wire bus to which your digital points connect. Perfect for a DC modeler who is tired of the snake's wedding of wires going everywhere to each point. Let's use this opportunity to take a quick tour around the AEU. We won't go into great detail as this is covered in its manual. This is the power input, only required if you have a bank of several AEUs in a row and the need topping up with power. Next is the RJ12 socket for that curly cord. These are the inputs from the switch split into four banks of three, three wire inputs to each. That makes 12 inputs, so enough for two alpha switch units. It's worth mentioning here that the AEU can receive inputs from nearly any form of switch. Alpha switch Ds shown here, cobalt S levers like those in a signal box, or even your old stud and probe. This is a plug for a digital repeater for the setup display, which is here. Now ignore this if this is the first AEU you are installing, as its defaults cover everything. If you're still curious, one of these is for the rare occasion you need to manually choose a cab address, whose default cab number is 4. The other button is to start off the automatic point addressing with another number, other than the default of 1. The AEU automatically defines the first point's address as 1, then the next point to 2, etc. to 12. Even when you daisy chain AEUs together, the next to AEUs points automatically start at 13 to 24 and so on. This is an on off switch, just leave it on for now. This socket is for daisy chaining of banks of AEUs where the lead goes from here to the adjacent AEUs input here. As I said, all of this is covered in detail in the manual supplied. For today's installation, nothing needs setting, so just plug and play. Each three wire output from the alpha switch goes to a corresponding three wire input on the AEU. DCC Concepts RGB ribbon, DCD RGB, is ideal. Use wire strippers to cut 6mm through the outer sleeves. This is important as you don't want to be clamping up on the insulation and wondering why nothing is happening. Even worse, too much wire sticking out risks short circuits. Then twist off each sleeve as you pull it off. This is much more effective than removing the sleeve, then trying to twist the bare wire. It's also best to cut too much off and then trim to length. Note that tinning with solder is not required. A small flat head screwdriver tightens up the socket. Onto the AEU. Its spring connector needs 10 millimeters of wire stripped away. Again, too much and it could short, too little, and again, you might not make a contact. The panel, with its alpha switch and AEU, is now connected to a DCC system. With an NCE system shown here, 
it just plugs into the DCC panel. Similarly, a DC user using the low-cost sniffer to create an accessory bus will follow this same procedure. At the same time, 12 volts of DC regulated power is connected to run the alpha switch. With a DCC system now created for our arrangement, at the other end, the Cobalt IP digital point motor is connected into its two-wire accessory bus. The rest is blissfully simple. We are now going to assign this point motor to our relevant pair of button switches on the panel. Gently slide the switch to set, that is, away from the body of the motor. Now operate the switch a few times. Notice again how the display confirms the address. Now gently slide the point motor switch to run, that is towards the body of the motor. Pressing the switches now operates the point motor. Repeat this for all the other point motors. Remember the AEU has already allocated 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 etc. Nothing else to do but select set so the cobalt learns its address. Operate the next switch. Select Run and that's it. More information on all the products mentioned can be found on the DCC Concepts website as well as plenty more hints and tips.